Normally, when running big machine learning jobs using convolutional neural networks, you need the GPUs, and sometimes plenty of them. But let's be honest, uh, GPUs are expensive and hard to get nowadays with the chip shortage and everything else that is happening in the world. So it is unlikely that you have plenty of spare GPUs lying around. This is why running big machine learning jobs on Google Kubernetes Engine makes sense. GKE gives you access to all kinds of machine types, from the humble VM with one vCPU to a monster-sized VM with dozens of vCPUs and with access to state-of-the-art GPUs like the NVIDIA A100. What makes Kubernetes attractive is that you can scale up or down the number of resources, depending on how heavy your workloads are. And also Kubernetes has an excellent jobs API, which you can make use to distribute jobs across a large number of nodes. And more importantly, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. To run machine learning jobs in Kubernetes, you can use, for instance, the popular Kubeflow, which is open source, and it's a machine learning framework, which is designed for the specific purpose of running machine learning jobs in Kubernetes in a distributed fashion. With GKE, we are able to pay only for GPUs that we actually need. And we can do that by scaling up or down the number of worker nodes. But we are still paying through the nodes for the best GPUs. Just to give you an idea of the prices involved in renting a GPU, let's take a look at the state-of-the-art NVIDIA A100 pricing in the Google Cloud. It is a hefty cost at $2,141 per GPU per month. Yes, you can reduce the cost a lot by committing to a long-term use uh, from one year to three years. But that hardly works for most companies. What if there is a way to borrow the same GPU for 60 to 90% less and without committing to anything? Yes, you guessed it right. There's a way with Spot VMs. The catch with a Spot VM is that the, the shiny GPU can be taken off you at any time with very little warning. But then again, instead of paying 2140 US dollars per month, you only pay $642 per month. Unlike preemptible VMs, which can be used for a maximum of 24 hours, Spot VMs have no time limits. I know that I mentioned exact prices, but Spot prices do change at least once per month. So take the numbers I just mentioned with a pinch of salt. Also, uh, bear in mind that not all the regions in GCP have uh, GPUs available. On average, you should expect to pay 60 to 91% less for a GPU with spot pricing when compared to a full price GPU. And you only have to pay for a use. Right, I'm going to show you how to create a GKE cluster with spot VMs automatically using Terraform. One important thing to know is that at the moment, the ability of creating spot VMs in GKE is still a preview feature, which means that in order for you to be able to access this functionality in the Terraform Google model, you need to make sure that you are using the beta submodules. In this case, I'm going to be creating a public cluster. And in this public cluster, I'm going to create uh, three node pools. I'm going to create a node pool with a standard uh, full price VMs. You should always have one to make sure that your cluster never runs out of nodes. Then I'm going to create another node pool with preemptible VMs. And then thirdly, I'm going to be creating a node pool with spot VMs. The first node pool has full price VMs. You can control here the type of VM you want to create by changing the machine type. And you can also increase or decrease the, the disk and other uh, parameters uh, that you might want to change. And uh, here you can also change the number of nodes. If you specify to have a regional cluster, then this number of nodes is going to create a replica in each zone. But if you have only one zone for your cluster, then this is the number of actual nodes that you will have. Then I have here another uh, node pool, which is called the ephemeral node pool. And this node pool is using preemptible VMs. And here you can see the flag preemptible equal to true. And then here we have a node pool for spot VMs. And you can see here a flag called spot equal to true. To make sure that uh, your Terraform script works, you need to have the Google provider set up and uh, with a, a reference to the credentials, to the project, into the region in GCP that you want to use. To be able to create the spot VMs, you need to have the Google beta provider. And also you need to provide the same information as you provide for the normal provider. 
Okay, so you will notice that each node pool has a machine type that in this case, as an example, I've set the machine type as E2 medium, which is basically a very light um, VM. If you wanted to have something more powerful, you can change the machine type per node pool. Yeah, each node in the same node pool has to have the same machine type. So if you want to have different machine types available in your cluster, then you need to make sure you have more than one node pool. So if I wanted to go for a really powerful machine type, I could change, for example, this machine type here for the spot VMs to be the A2 mega GPU with 16G. 16G in this case stands for 16 GPUs. <laughs> which is, is a lot. Yeah, it's going to cost you a, a small fortune. You can use it if it's available within the region and the zone that you picked. Right. So to in order to try this script, you need to copy this file here. I have a template file I've created, the variables.auto.tfrs.template. Copy this. And then you create another file called variables.auto.tfvars without the template. And then you just paste it there. And then you need to make sure all this information is correct. You find out what your GCP project ID is, where you want to create your, your resources. You need to specify the region, the zone. Then you need to specify the default node pool name. We can pick whatever name you prefer. Cluster, you can give it a name you want. Then you specify the name of your network, subnetwork, and then the zones where you want to create your nodes. And then you have here the name of the service account. This service account is really important because this is a service account that uh, is used by the GKE cluster to access resources within your uh, GCP project. So you specify a name here, and this is going to be automatically created for you. Enable APIs, it's going to enable all the APIs that are required for this script. Then here you'll see that it's creating a, a VPC network. All right, so for the demo, I need to make sure I have a credentials folder with a JSON file which has the key for my service account. I don't have a service account yet, so I'm going to create that. I also don't have a project ID yet, so I'm going to create that so you can see how it works. And then I'm going to fill in all the information here as soon as I do that. So let's go into Google Cloud. This is my uh, Google Cloud account. I have here my first project, but I'm not going to use this project. So I'm going to create a new project. So I'm going to name this project GK cluster with spot VMs. And uh, I have a project. I need to make sure I select it. Okay, so I have my project selected. Now it's time to create a service account. I can do that via IAM. This service account will allow Terraform to create anything it needs inside the project. Okay, I'm just going to call it Terraform service account. I'm going to pick a role of owner for now. If you are doing this for production, you normally would pick the exact permissions I need. Okay. So now I have a service account. What I need to do with the service accounts, I need to download the key. Yeah, so it's going to be a JSON key. As soon as you create it, it will download it and uh, it, you need to make sure this file is safe because you won't be able to download it again. I need to place this file in the correct directory and I'll do that. And then I'll go back to, uh, to the ID and change the Terraform details that I need. So I have created the credentials folder and uh, the secret is inside this file. I'm just going to change the name. Okay, so the name is the same. So I now need to set the project ID. This is the project ID. Now I need to give a name to my default node pool. I'm just going to call it standard. And then the cluster name is going to be Cold Mental GKE with Spot VMs. The network, Cold Mental VPC. Okay, then the zones are fine. And then the service account name, this is a service account just for the GKE cluster. And I'm going to name it 
GKE cluster SA. Okay. I'm assuming you already installed Terraform. If you haven't, then you need to follow another tutorial on how to set it up. Okay. So now that we've set up everything, let's go inside our Terraform project and we will call Terraform in it. And seems like it was successful. Now we just do Terraform plan. This will check the project against our Terraform uh, script and see what needs to be changed or added. In this case, it found that 14 items need to be added to the project. So let's do now Terraform apply. I'll say yes. And fingers crossed. Seems like it's creating the cluster. It's finished creating the cluster with the three node pools. So we have three nodes, but we have three node pools. We should have three node pools. Let's take a look. So we have the ephemeral node pool, which contains uh, preemptible VMs. We have the spot node pool, which should contain spot VMs. And then the standard node pool, it will just contain a normal full price VM. So let's take a look at the spot node pool. And we should have a label that identifies it as a spot VM. You can see here this label, which is added by Google, which is, it tells me this is a spot VM. GK is spot equal to true. Yeah. So it has created a spot VM. For preemptible VMs, let's just take a look what label we should see. So this is a preemptible VM. So you can see also a label cloud.google.com GKE preemptible equal to true. Okay. And then for the normal VM, you shouldn't have a label. As you can see, it says standard. What I'm going to do, and uh, in order for me not to be charged for these VMs, I'm going to make sure I delete all of this. I will go back to the terminal and I'm going to do terraform destroy. This will take a few minutes as well, but I won't bother you with that. All right, that's all for now. I hope you found this uh, video useful and I hope you can uh, create also a GK cluster with spot VMs. I'll see you again soon. Happy coding.